How you doing guys? Welcome to another video. This is volume 15. What is an ideal gas? And we look at the ideal gas equation and then we do some calculations involving the ideal gas law. Let's go. Okay, so volume 15, still on gases. We basically look at the ideal gas equation and then we do some calculations. So the IB applications are, we need to solve problems relating to this ideal gas equation, and then we need to be able to work out the molar mass of a gas from the ideal gas equation, which should be a lab that your teacher will do with you. Okay, so what is the ideal gas equation? Well, the ideal gas equation is this equation PV equals NRT, and that's something that must be committed to memory. And to use this form of the equation, you need to convert those values or those variables into the right units. Now, there's some common units and then there's some IB units. Now, P is a measure of pressure and it's common to measure pressure in kilopascals. V is the volume, which is often measured in decimeters cubed. N is the number of moles. T is the temperature in Kelvin. And remember to calculate something in Kelvin, it's 273 plus the value in degrees Celsius. And then we have this R factor, which is known as the universal gas constant, and that was derived by subbing in the different values of P, V, R, and T, and working out what that gas constant was. Now the IB tend to use some other units as well. We have pressure in pascals and volume in meters cubed. So you've just got to make sure you know which units you're working in, and the pressure and volume can be slightly different, and in fact, they're just divided by a thousandth of each other. So just be careful with that. So using the ideal gas equation, 0.25 moles of nitrogen placed into a flask of five decimeters cubed at a temperature of five degrees, what is the pressure in the flask? So we start off by using the ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT, and then what we want to do is rearrange to find the pressure. So the pressure of N2 gas would be equal to the NRT over V. And then we can substitute in our values. Our number of moles is 0.25. R, the universal gas constant, is 8.31. And the temperature must be converted to Kelvin, so 273 plus 5, all over the volume in decimeters cubed, which is 5. So to determine the pressure, we substitute those into our calculator and we've worked out that the pressure is 116. Now, because I've used decimeters cubed as my volume, means my pressure would be in kPa, kilopascals. Okay, so we use this relationship, this ideal gas equation, to do gas stoichiometry. So octane is one of the main components of petrol. What volume of octane must have been used if 50 litres of carbon dioxide measured at 120 degrees Celsius and 112 kPa was produced? So we haven't been given an equation, so we must write the equation for this reaction. It's another combustion reaction, and in another video I looked at how to balance combustion reactions, but you want to use the same CHOD. So you need to go back to your organic and get the formula of octane right. Octane is an alkane, so it's C8H18 plus O2, which is combustion, forms carbon dioxide and water. Octane would be a liquid. Oxygen gas is a gas, carbon dioxide gas, and the water might be liquid or gas, depending upon the temperature at the end. So we balance for carbon, balance for hydrogen. Here we've got an odd number of oxygen, so we get that odd number, stick it in front of the O2, and then apply D for double, double everything else. So we get the balanced chemical equation. So the first step when completing this question is to work out the number of moles of CO2. They've told us that we have 50 litres. They've told us about some temperature and pressures as well. So we need to determine the number of moles of carbon dioxide using the ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT. So the number of moles of CO2 will equal RT over PV, sorry, PV over RT. So the pressure was 112 kPa, the volume was 50 litres or 50 decimeters cubed, 
And then we divide that by the ratio. Remember the gas ratio is 8.31. And then we multiply that by the temperature in Kelvin. So 120 plus 273. That allows us to determine the number of moles of carbon dioxide to be 1.7 one moles. So 1.71 moles of carbon dioxide. <clears throat> now what we need to do is use the ratio between carbon dioxide and octane to work out the number of moles of octane. So the thing that you want, it's stoichiometric coefficient 2 over the thing that we've got, carbon dioxide, which is 16, times by the number of moles of carbon dioxide. So we have an eighth simplifying the ratio, and then we can determine the number of moles of octane. That works out to be an eighth of 1.71, which is 0 0.214 mole. After finding the number of moles, then I could find the mass of octane. But the question doesn't ask us for the mass, it asks us for the volume. But we can't use PV equals NRT because the octane is not a gas. So we need to use the formula number of moles equals mass over mole mass, and then determine the mass of octane by using its molar mass. So we can work out the mass of octane to be 24.5 grams. 24.5 grams of octane has been burnt in this reaction. And then this is where we use the last little bit of information, the density of octane. They gave us the density for a reason, and that was so we could work out the volume. So density is the mass divided by volume, and density is given the symbol P. So P equals M over V. Now we need to work out the volume of octane, so we simply just rearrange this equation to do mass over density. So the volume is equal to the mass of our substance divided by the density, which in this case the density was 0 0.703 grams per mil. So we have 24.5 divided by 0 0.703, and that will allow us to determine the volume of octane in this reaction, which ends up being 34.8 mils or 34.8 centimeters cubed. Okay, another example. Propane undergoes complete combustion as follows, and we're given the equation here, so we don't need to balance it. All volumes are measured at 120 degrees and 102 kPa. When 80 centimeters cubed of propane and 500 centimeters cubed of oxygen react, determine the limiting reagent, what volumes of carbon dioxide and water are produced in this reaction. Okay, so they told us that all volumes are measured at the same temperature and pressure, so we don't need to use the ideal gas equation here. We use the relationship that volume is proportional to moles. So we need to be a little bit careful of when we do and when we don't use that relationship. We could use PV equals NRT, but it's going to take us a lot longer. So we can work out the number of moles of C3H8 to be 80 centimetres cubed and the number of moles of oxygen to be 500 centimetres cubed. To determine the limiting, we divide by the stoichiometric coefficients, and that allows us to work out which one is limiting and which one is excess. So we can see here that our propane is our limiting reagent. It will run out first. So we're going to use the volume of that to work out the volume of carbon dioxide and water. So the ratio between carbon dioxide and propane is 3 over 1 times the volume of propane, which in this case is 80. So it will be 3 times 80, and that will give us the volume of carbon dioxide that would be produced, 240 centimetres cubed. We can also work out the volume of water liquid produced by using the ratio. This time it will be 4 over 1 times the volume of propane. So it will be 4 times 80 and that will give us the volume of water produced in the reaction. That leaves us with 320 centimeters cubed. We could use PV equals NRT here, but it would take a lot longer. Give it a try if you like. 
Okay, the third example. Phosphorus burns in chlorine according to the equation below. What mass of PCl3 is produced when excess phosphorus is burnt in 355 mils of chlorine at STP? Now they've given you the words STP, so they want you to use STP. If they say that, you've got to use it. So the first thing we need to do is work out the number of moles of Cl2 by using the equation N equals V over Vm, where Vm is our molar volume. So we have 355 mils or 355 centimetres cubed. So we need to convert that to decimetres cubed, dividing by 1,000. And then we divide that by the molar volume, which would be 22.7. That allows us to calculate our number of moles of chlorine, which in this case will be 0 0.0156 mole. And now we can work out the number of moles of PCl3 using the ratio. So the ratio would be thing that we want, 4, over the thing that we've got, chlorine, which is 6, times by the number of moles of chlorine. So it's 4 over 6 times 0 0.0156, which will give us the number of moles of PCl3. The number of moles works out to be 0 0.0104 moles. And now we're in a position to find the mass. We can work out the mass of the PCL3 by doing mole times molar mass. They haven't given us the density here, so we can't work it out anyway. So we can strictly only work out the mass. So we have that multiplied by its molar mass, which is 137.32, which gives us a mass of 1.43 grams. Okay, so an IB prescribed practical is to, to, to determine the molar mass of a gas using the ideal gas equation. And if we're asked to do that, we need to connect the formula for the number of moles and the formula for the ideal gas equation to work out the molar mass. Now we can equate these two things by subbing in number of moles equals mass over molar mass into the PV equals NRT formula. And what we get is PV equals mass times R times T over the molar mass. So we've removed the mole and took, put in the mass and molar mass variables. So here's an example. A sample of gas has a volume of 445 centimetres cubed and a mass of 1.5 grams at a pressure of 95 kPa at a temperature of 28 degrees. Calculate its molar mass. So we use the formula PV equals mass times R times T over molar mass and then we need to rearrange to find the molar mass. So we rearrange the formula to give us the molar mass is equal to the mass times the universal gas constant times the temperature divided by the pressure times the volume. <coughs> Excuse me. They said the mass was 1.5 grams times by the ratio 8.31 times by the temperature which must be in Kelvin divided by the pressure which in this case was 95 and the volume we need to change to decimeters cubed. So we can work out the molar mass from those values and the molar mass is 88.75 grams per mole. A more likely type of question is when you're given a sample experiment and you need to work out some of these values from the data that you've been given. So for example, a simple lab might be we have a mass of CuCO3 and we heat it and then we can collect the gas via what we call displacement or we could collect the gas in a gas syringe. The gas produced in this case is carbon dioxide, so we can measure the amount of carbon dioxide produced as we heat this test tube or this conical flask. We can measure the mass lost by taking the mass at the start and the mass at the end. So you will be asked to calculate the molar mass of the gas and maybe to determine the percentage difference. So if we've got the mass at the start with our chemical and then the mass at the end, knowing that carbon dioxide has been produced, we can actually calculate the mass of carbon dioxide produced by just doing a takeaway. We've been given some information about the volume and the pressure, and I forgot to include the temperature here as well, but I put that on the next page. We need to calculate the molar mass and the percentage difference of the gas and compare that to carbon dioxide. So we have our mass change, which is our mass from of CO2. So we can take that from the previous slide. 
And now we can start to set up our relationship. PV equals nRT, and then we substitute in mass over molar mass for our number of moles, and then we can work out the molar mass. So the molar mass of the gas, again using the same formula, would be mass times ratio times temperature divided by the molar mass. Sorry, divided by the pre pressure times the volume. In this case, the temperature, I forgot to record it, but we can assume that the temperature is 20, 293 degrees Kelvin, and they would give you that in the question, that's my bad. Um, and we divide that by the pressure times the volume. So the pressure was 101.3 and the volume was 40.1 centimeters cubed, but we need to change that into decimeters cubed. So that would be 0 0.0401. So we can work out the molar mass of the gas to be 47.35 grams per mole. But we knew that the gas must have been carbon dioxide. So we know the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44.01 by using the periodic table. So we can calculate our percentage difference from our experiment by doing our molar mass, take away the known value of the molar mass, divided by the known value of the molar mass, times by 100. That will give us our percentage difference. In this case, we've been pretty close. Our experiment is reasonably accurate, which gives us a percentage difference of 7.59%, which is something you could be asked to do in a lab. Okay, volume 15, some top tips. The molar mass of a gas is a very possible question. They might weave some uncertainties in there as well. And just make sure when you use the PV equals NRT, you've got the right units. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more. And I'll see you.